What's that like for, for you guys to have done that show, you know, before this whole multiverse thing exploded and then thought you finished and then to come? Especially back like in She-Hulk, you, you did a few uh, episodes. What's that like revisiting that character? Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. Um, I, obviously, I, I thought that the show had been cancelled and we finished and that was the end of it. And, you know, obviously I was tremendously sad about that, but also you know, I was really proud of what we did and, and had such great experiences making that show and the fans are insane. Um, and uh, and uh, and then a lot of time passed, and it was just finished, you know. Um, and I, uh, I I have a joke with Vincent um, D'Onofrio, who would call me occasionally, and he'd be like, "They're definitely going to call us." Uh, after a couple of years, I was like, "I don't think they're going to call us." Um, and um, and they did, and we we you know we um, been making some stuff, as you say, and, and uh, it's like a excuse the pun, there's like a rebirth, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then uh, for you, Alden, obviously you, you can't say whether you have or you haven't been cast in Born Again, but um, and I am wondering, like, the, the new show that is about to come up, if you were to uh, go back to that character, what would be something you would want to explore for, for Foggy? Because in season three, of course, it ended with this full circle, uh, your relationship got back to its original state after, you know, falling out. Um, what else is there that you would like to explore for Foggy himself? Well, um, I mean, first of all, I, you know, honestly just feel uh, really lucky to have been a part of something so great and to, you know, still get to come and meet fans and stuff. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I would, I would leave that up to the writers. I'm just an actor. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, mean, I think we have a lot of questions lined up already, so I want to dive right in, make sure we get all of them, or as many as we can. So, uh, hello, and uh, tell us your name before you ask your question. Hello, my name is Barrett, and oh, hi. Um, hi um, and I uh, think Netflix uh, gets that of the way he deserves to be. And I'm, I'm a little bit um, worried about the Disney version of him and Foggy. Um, but um, my question is, what do you um, wish for the future of Daredevil? So yeah, the future of Daredevil as a character or as a show? As a character and as a show. Okay. Hmm. Tricky to answer. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so tricky as well because as, you know, if you speculate on sp specifics, then they become a new story, exactly. and then it, and then I, I, you know, my worry is that then, if we do do something like that, it it takes the, a bit of the surprise away from the fans. So I, I won't really get into into specifics. And to be honest, I'm just thrilled to that we get to keep doing it. You know. Um, I, I'm going to blink and I'm going to be way too old to play this character, so <laughs> so I'm really grateful that I get to do it at least for one more season. Um, and, um, it, you know, I, I just, I hope we just get to keep um, telling the same great stories that that character has had and, and maybe on Disney Plus, maybe we'll be able to do some stuff we couldn't do on Netflix. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly my little cameo in She-Hulk was really fun because we got to do a little bit of the CGI stuff that we, we weren't able to do before and, uh, you know, that's certainly in keeping with what the, what the character can do in the comics, so we'll see. Thanks for your question. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hello. Hi. Hi, Toledo. I have uh, two questions. The first one is if you uh, look back and you could, both of you, uh, make a change in the script, what would that be? I think the script of Daredevil. Is there any some, something you will change or rewrite the story? I'm 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 going to change the question a little bit because, like, obviously the the show is established as it is, but uh, uh, like, let's look at the things that you found especially challenging to uh, to shoot that you thought, like, well, maybe we well, should have done this a little bit. I do remember, though. I don't I think you'll mind me saying. I do remember, like, when season one came out and people really loved the show. I remember like people in the street would get really mad at Foggy. They'd get really cross with him because because like in the show he was really upset with me that I hadn't told him about Daredevil and that like I kept it a secret. And but I remember like Eldon would come to work and be like, this guy fucking, oh sorry. 
This, <laughs> this guy shouted at me because I'm like, you should be so. He said like, you should be so grateful that your your best friend is a super. Did you remember that? I do remember that, and I would say I didn't write the show. You know? But yeah, that was uh, that was a exactly right. Pretty yeah, wild exactly. experience. Yeah. I mean, and, and uh, like one of the things I, I ask uh, uh, other actors that are on the stage, on the Comic Con stage. It's, you have your acting job, but you have the shows that bring you to Comic-Cons and like these intense fan interactions. Yeah. How has Daredevil changed your life as an actor? Uh, I mean, to, or, or to be at these Comic-Cons, has that impacted certain parts of your life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for one thing, um, you know, you, you don't really don't really get to meet the fans and actually have conversations with them and get to know them a little bit, so, uh, the show definitely changed a lot of things for me, um, and so yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing is just getting to have that face-to-face -face interaction with fans. Yeah, listen, I, I didn't grow up reading comics, and so I would probably have never come to a comic book convention in my whole life. And I'm so grateful that I've had these experiences because I really am moved. Like I, I, I was thinking again yesterday, like it's so cool to be in a in a building with so many people who are all adults who are all here just to have a good time. It's so rare. Like even if you go to a sporting event, half the people are furious at the end, at the end of it. You know what I mean? And like other than like a theme park or something, there's very few opportunities where you get to you know like everyone is here. No one's in an argument with anyone. We're all here just to have a good time and get dressed up and enjoy the weekend and be silly and you know meet people and it's really it's really life affirming, especially when you know when there's so much stuff in the world which is problematic at the moment and scary and stuff. So it's really cool. That's certainly impacted my life the most from playing this game. Also, thank you both so much and thank you for your question. I have another yes. question also. Go ahead. So, if you had the opportunity to act another role as a comic superhero, is there, except of Daredevil, we know you love him, so which one will, would you imagine to act in the Marvel, DC, some comic hero? I don't know. Does Any it? superhero. Yes. And, and why? Um, I was just watching Guardians of the Galaxy the other day. Uh, it's a great movie. Those movies are great. Um, uh, and I, I love James Gunn as a director, so uh, that would be something that would be cool for me to But I, I don't know, it's just such a, a hard thing to decide because there's just so much great stuff out there that, I don't know. I want to play Foggy Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to speculate. I'm very happy with the one I got. So. Exactly, it's the era of super heroes, I'm yeah. happy to have you both. Yeah. Thanks Thank so much. You. Hello. My name is Andreas from Germany. It's a pleasure to stay here, but it's also a little bit pressure. <laughs> uh, my question goes to Charlie and um, about the new season. Will it go the uh, same direction as the first three, so a little bit darker one? Or like your first experience in Shira, a little bit more fun, a lighter way? Yeah, do you know what? Feel free to ask another question. I have no idea. <laughs> and, and, and most people that I've met this weekend they seem to know more than me about the show. <laughs> They've read more stuff than I have, so... Uh, I, I, know, I genuinely know nothing at this point, so... Do you, can, I, can you ask another question? Yeah, of course. Uh, what was your um, most... Um, what the fuck moment <laughs> in the first three seasons? In the first three seasons? Yeah. In the... Um... That's a tricky one. Um, I, I, I remember reading the script, the, the, the first few scripts for episode four, uh, there you go, um, for season two, and I, and I read uh, up to season four, uh, episode four, um, and right at the end of the, that episode, we've had this crazy journey with the Punisher, with the amazing John Bernthal, and right at the end, the last line of the script, there's a voice that says, hello Matthew, and it was Electra. And that, I remember reading that and thinking, cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, just for argument's sake, it's, it's, uh, for our guests, it's always very difficult to speculate about what's to come. Because, uh, like you said, 
often you don't know because, I mean, even the actors are kept in, in the dark. And uh, if you would know, you know, the element of surprise would be gone. So feel free to try and ask questions, but like speculating is going to be very difficult. So go ahead. Hi guys. Um, so Hi. My question is a bit weird. So uh, in the show, both Matt and Foggy are getting stabbed and shot. And um, I was wondering how how is your uh, pain threshold, and uh, what was the most physically painful thing that you guys ever experienced in your life? <laughs> uh, um, I crashed on my mountain bike once. Um, I say that I used my face brake because uh, I went right over the handlebars and landed right on my face. That was probably the most experienced? It's a great question. Uh, so I was just telling Eldon, literally before we came on stage here, I fell off my motorbike in Germany. It was my own fault. And I, the reason I was, to, actually to be fair, the reason I was telling Eldon, I was saying Germans are the best drivers in the world. And I mean that, like the most respectful drivers in the world. But um, yeah, I did a motorcycle tour when I was a younger man, all around Germany. Um, but I, just outside Munster, I had an accident. Yeah, yeah. And, th and there's a there's a Ducati um, there's a Ducati workshop at, just outside Munster, so I had to go and have my bike fixed and before I could carry on. But it was still fixable. So. Oh, it was fixable, and then I went all around the rest of Germany and had, had an amazing time. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Thank you so Thank much you. for your question. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I was curious because. We don't know what happened to Matt and Foggy during the snap. Um, and I guess I was just wondering, like hypothetically, if Matt survived the snap, how would he react to just like hearing half the heartbeats of everyone around him in the city just vanish all at once? <laughs> um, I guess it would be pretty lonely. <laughs> you know, like, you know, he probably to feel like, where did all the people go? <laughs> you know, maybe, but maybe it would be a blessed relief. Maybe it wouldn't be so noisy. I'll go with that. It's gonna be, it's like, less people, better traffic. <laughs> uh, just easy to get around. Yeah. Always look on the bright yeah. side. So he was, so that's the official Marvel stance is Daredevil was thrilled <laughs> by, the, by the snap. <laughs> Good question. Thanks so much. Hello, first of all, thank you for coming to Germany. I really appreciate it and it's nice to meet you both. And my question is, in the series of Daredevil, is there a scene that you remember that you improvised that made it into the series? How much room was there for improvisation on the show? Well, I, I don't know, for me anyways, I, there wasn't ever really a time that I felt the need. I, you know, I, the, Writing was so good on that show that, um, yeah, I, I didn't ever really feel like I needed to improvise. And, and truth be told, that I uh, wasn't very well versed in the comics when we went into making the show, so I really relied heavily on the people around me. And I, did, I don't know that I really felt comfortable um, improvising in that world. Yeah, yeah. no, Eldon said it best as well. The writing was so good um, that. I, I don't remember ever once really, kind of, certainly not with the text, improvising. But you know, like, we had a lot of scenes in the Nelson and Murdoch offices. And after a while, you know, there's one door, and there's really just one big room. And you kind of, the scene, you want to try and make the scenes different and interesting. So we would come up with, you know, we would, without changing the script, we would come up with things to do and, you know, like try and be making coffees and stuff as we were as we were doing the scene, which is anything any business is really difficult if you're playing a character who can't see because it just takes a lot more time. But, um, <laughs> but we had a lot we had a lot of fun kind of you know playing with the, the geography. Yeah, flesh out the scene. Awesome. Thanks so much for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi. I hope you have a, a nice day today, <laughs> and I have a, a question. Um, I already told you guys that I'm really a perfectionist, I was with the painting, and I want to ask you, uh, are you perfectionists too, and how do you deal with it? 
Hmm. Being a perfectionist. Yes. Um, lots of therapy. Um, I have a great therapist right now. Um, I'm his therapist. <laughs> we're going to talk right after this. Um, I don't know. That's a great question. I don't really know. Um, you know, I think at a certain point, you just kind of have to let go of things. So, um, I don't know. Charlie? No, just to be gentle with yourself. It's like, I think everyone has a perfectionistic ideals in some areas of their life. Um, and it's really, it's really cool when you care that much about something. But it, if, if you can't be gentle with yourself, then you'll always fail. You know, because I think perfectionism is impossible. So just try to just, you know, and I, I'm saying this to myself as much as I'm saying it to you. Just try and be really kind to yourself and enjoy, you know, don't ever forget what you've achieved. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you for your work. And as an actor, of course, it's, as an actor, of course, it's what you hinted at, like you have to trust the writers, but with this, like being a perfectionist, you have yeah, to trust the entire totally. production. Of and also, like when you see those the scenes on, on paper, there's a million ways you can say those lines. There's a million ways that that scene can go. And no one way is right, you know? And, and it's, as you're right, as an actor, it's really important to kind of be present, in the moment, try to tell the truth with the lines that you have, try to be authentic. And then it's really important when they call cut and you go home to let it go. Because otherwise you got, you know, when I was first started acting, I would, I would do a scene and then I'd go home and I'd be thinking about, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that, it'd be better if I did that. You can't do that. You, you, you just have to kind of let it be what it is and then move on, you know? And it turns out beautifully as we've seen on there, that also. Hello. And my name is Leah, and first I want to say thank you for coming to Germany and be so sweet to us. Thank you. And my question is, uh, would you like to be with your character Daredevil in more Marvel movies, and if so, in which one? <laughs> so would you, would you... This is tricky. Yeah, this is a tricky <laughs> question. So... Um... Like, all right, so I'm going to change it just to spice things up. If, if Daredevil were to, uh, like Daredevil and Foggy, if, if they were to beat up uh, DC heroes and villains, which one would they beat up? <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> that's not going to happen, so. Yeah, that's true. Um, I have to be honest, I, I felt so lucky to be a part of this thing. Like, I would always come back and do whatever in anything, you know what I mean? It's really hard to, you know, to to pick something. I know that doesn't, you know, answer I, your question. And I think, I think, but because of the tone of our show, um, it would, I think there's a place for Daredevil to show up in Deadpool. It would be really cool. Great, now that's a new story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello. God, I hope I'm not going to break Charlie with my questions. I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julia, and my question is actually for the both of you. So, is there any scene, since both Matt and Foggy go through a lot throughout the three seasons, so is there any scene that means a lot, like for the both of you, like a very intense scene that after shooting it you were like, whoa, this is an intense thing? <laughs> I broke wow. them. I mean, you had a lot of intense scenes on the show, of course. Yeah, so it's like to take one out is. Um, you were shouting at me a lot. I was mean, well, <laughs> unreasonably angry. A lot. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of memories of that scene where you're, you know, lying on the couch and I'm really upset at you, and I think at one point I even give you the finger. You know, and, um, I, I guess. With all of the scenes, like working with Charlie was, uh, you know, it was just, he is a really well thought out person. He's a, a, a really smart guy. He really understands, we were kind of talking about this a little bit last night, he really understands like good trauma, you know? And so um, I, I think all of the stuff that we did together, it was like always a real pleasure to get to set and like us sort of like start talking about things mm. and um, Charlie was always a very giving actor, you know, like if he ever had an idea or he, you know, 
felt like he, he would come to me beforehand and said, like, this is what I'm thinking, and, you know, what do you think? And so, uh, I, you know, I felt really lucky to work with him, and um, I feel like a lot of that stuff came pretty naturally for us, yeah, too. Yeah, totally. like, We definitely, um, you know, it's, there, is, there are times, you know, where you're working with another actor, and, you know, you feel like you're pulling teeth a little bit, but I don't know, every scene we did together yeah, felt nice. really, like... Me too, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking of it now, like, the flashbacks stuff that was so it. fun, you know? And like, we, you know, we, did, had a, we were like drunk, and that became like one of the catchphrases of the show, uh, avocados and law, you know? Like, that's one of the things that people remember. That was just a line in the script, but we were, we were supposed to be drunk, and so one of the takes before we shot, we were just running around in circles trying to get, like, dizzy. Um, to shoot the scene, so we were like spinning in circles to try and be like dizzy and drunk. And, and you know, there was a really fun, it was early on in the series, it was a really fun bonding episode. And yeah. So that's some of my favorite memories was the, with, the, with the flashback stuff. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. Hi. Hello, my name is Sarah. And first of all, thanks for coming to Germany. And uh, I have a question for Charlie. Um, who do you ship more? Um, uh, Matt and Jennifer, or Matt and Karen? It's like kill your baby. I mean, look, Karen Page is Karen Page, you know, uh, and with with Matt Murdock, I don't think it gets more uh, deep than Karen Page, you know. And shout out to the the wonderful Deb Brown Wall, who's just amazing, and and you know, I was saying this to Elden yesterday, like you know. I don't know what's going to happen with the other characters in, in the new show, but I know for a fact that, that Eldon and Deborah were the, the heartbeat of what we did before, um, and the show is a success because of them. Um, but it was really fun working with Tatiana, you know, she was amazing, and it's, it was fun because she's got the superhero element, you know, so that there was like the drama and the, the sexiness around us being superheroes, it was a very different tone. Um, but I'm, just don't just don't tell Karen about it. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's keep that on the down low. Thanks so much Thank for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. Um, at first, I want to say thank you for being here and for being so supportive and um, portraying the characters the way that you do. And I want to give special kudos to Foggy because, as much as we all love Matt, I think Foggy doesn't get enough love yeah, for well being said. such a loyal friend. Yeah. question for Charlie as well. Um, you played Matt a few times now, but changing your voice or your intonation, how easy or how difficult is it for you? Can you just do it like a snap or is it just getting into the moment again and again? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I'm doing it on purpose. I think it, it just depends on who's writing it. I think that depending on who's writing the show, you know, like when we made the, the show on Netflix, it was the same writers for that whole time, but someone else wrote Spider-Man, someone else wrote She-Hulk. So it's, I, I think your voice probably just adapts a little bit to the, to the new writer, so it's, it's not on purpose. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the same voice, <laughs> but of course it's a different accent for me, so there's a lot of work goes into the accent. Um, but good observation though. Thank you. you guys are so, uh, you guys are so polite. Everyone who comes up here is like, thank you so much. It's really nice. Yeah, German people are really polite. Yeah. Hello, welcome. Come on up to the microphone. Together. <laughs> um, my name is Marcella. Um, my, my question is, um, I don't know if you have seen the Batman, but in the movie, um, he listens to Nirvana, and I was wondering uh, what would be on Foggy's and Air Devil's playlist. Um, question. I feel like Foggy would listen to a lot of classic rock. <laughs> classic rock. Classic yeah. rock. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, I, I think I think Matt probably has a, a really embarrassing like '90s pop. <laughs> you know, I, I get the impression that he really dug that era, and he and he probably still thinks it's really cool. So I'm thinking like Ace of Base. <laughs> All, all that she, all that she wants. Is this Matt yeah. talking or Charlie talking? <laughs> uh, awesome. What, what is yours? I don't 
<laughs> but you ask them. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. Do you have a question? Yes. Hi. Um, I would like to know, uh, on the show, Matt and Foggy were working together as Nelson Murdoch, and I would like to know um, if you, Charlie and Elvin, would be working together, and if you had an office together, what would you do? What would you uh, be cool. your job? That's cool. What would our company be? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we would, uh, we would, we, we would be watchmakers. <laughs> We'd be big into timepieces. <laughs> Despite the fact that Matt can't read a lot. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We'd be like, we'd be really passionate about antique timepieces and watches. Awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Sold. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I want to ask you, uh, both of you, uh, what's the fondest memory that both of you have during uh, the filming of season one all the way to season three? Maybe uh, if it was filming or behind the scenes? Uh, so that's what I want to ask. You know, for me, um, it was just the group of people, you know, and our crew, and whenever we would have actors return for, you know, like, you know, do, they were doing guest spots or uh, recurring roles, you know, when they would come back. Um, I just remember really enjoying the people. We had a really good group of people, and our crew was amazing, so I think those are kind of my fondest memories. Yeah, uh, you know, same, similar to Eldon, like it was a really good, great bunch of people and we, we really got on and had a great time um, all the way through. Um, the, the, fight, the fight, the one take fight scene at the end of episode two um, was the first time I realised how incredible our stunt team were. So I'd read on the page that there was a, like a one take scene that they'd written I didn't really know what that was going to be like, and when I showed up on the day, you know, we had a whole day to shoot it, um, and it was just, it was, it was so cool to realize that I was on a show that wasn't just trying to get things done, that we really wanted to do it in a cool, classy, unique way, um, and it was, I just felt incredibly privileged to be part of that scene and, and to be part of this show, and it was in that moment that I was like, you know, this is so cool. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Thank you. It was amazing meeting you guys uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm Marilyn from Belgium, um, and my question is for you both. Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what is? Uh, have you watched all of the episodes from all uh, seasons, and uh, what is your favorite uh, scene? To watch them? Yeah, to watch. Okay, the favorite scene to, to watch. Difficult question. Like every every scene, I can't memory. stand yeah. watching myself. So I, I really, I haven't. I don't think I've. I don't think I've gone back and rewatched any of this stuff. Uh, but for me, when we were doing the show and, and as the seasons were coming back uh, or coming out, um, I always loved watching the fight stuff because I didn't have any part of that, <laughs> and uh, it was really cool to to see how all that stuff came together. You know, so that was always the. Cool for me. Um, yeah, I too, I can't stand watching Eldon. So, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I've seen every episode. I think I've seen a lot and most of them. Um, I, you know, it's not easy to watch yourself, and but it is. You know, like I try to, because also to help remember the story as you, you know, when you get to do a new season, it's. It's been so long, I want to remember what's happened and everything and, and see everyone's work and stuff. Um, oh man, it's so, it's so tricky. I, I, there's, one, there's one episode in season two where Matt and Karen are kind of falling in love and then at night he's off with Elektra fighting people and he's being really pulled in two different directions. And it, it was just, that episode was so thrilling to act. And it was so delicate to get it right because, you know, I, I think it was important that he didn't seem like he was duplicitous or a bad guy, but he was being pulled in different directions. And then he's also trying to defend Frank Castle in court. 
think it's like episode six or seven or something of season two. Uh, so it's one of my favorite episodes because of a lot of the scenes in it. Okay, thanks thank so much. Thank you. Hi. Hello, I'm Yonja. Uh, nice to meet you. It's really a pleasure for me. And my question is, how are you guys feeling like in a big universe like the Marvel Universe? How does it feel like? Uh, man, you know, um, I, I have a few friends of mine who are British actors who, um, when we were like in our 20s, they were playing superheroes. Like Andrew Garfield was doing Spider-Man. <laughs> Um, and uh, Henry Cavill was Superman, and, um, and Tom Hiddleston was Batman. And so, you know, and it was really cool. I was like a British actor, and these were my friends, and it was really cool to see them do this stuff. And you know, and I, I got to like 30, 30 years old, 32, and I was like, well, th that ship has sailed. You know, I'm too old. Now. <laughs> So like when this came along, and it, you know, Dede was Matt Murdock is a little older, you know. So it, it, when I got that opportunity, it was kind of like I'd never thought I would have that. So I've never really, I've never really come to terms with that. I still just feel unbelievably lucky and grateful that I got that opportunity and that I'm still doing it. Um, and uh, hopefully, long may it continue. You know. Thank you. Thank you. So we, we have two minutes left, so we're going to do a quick rapid fire question session. Come up to the microphone, ask your question, and then uh, I'm going to ask it to you. Quick question. Quick, quick question. question. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Bob from London. Charlie, are England going to win the World Cup? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great, Great question. <laughs> hi, if they would ever, like, if they would ever do it, would you be open to be in an Avengers movie? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> that, would, that would be the ultimate coolness, so I hope so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, what other actors and movies inspired you to become actors yourself? Well, you know, I started so young, I don't actually ever remember wanting to be an actor. I just kind of, I, as long as I can remember, I've been doing it, so, um, yeah, I don't really have a good answer to that question, sorry. I saw the Mighty Ducks when I was growing up. <laughs> I'm just being, I'm um, maybe a thousand. Um, no, I, uh, um, uh, I, God, um, I, one of my favorite movies of all time is Hook. I love that film. You know, I've seen that film so many times, it, and uh, I, you know, it kind of, it, especially the, the fantasy element. It just looked, it looked like it was so much fun to make that. Imagine having that food fight. You know the food fight from Hook? You know? Yeah. One from she does. <laughs> it's a great question. Thanks so much. Uh, hi, my name is Robin and uh, I'm from Wetzlar. I wanted to ask a question to Charlie Cox. Um, is there any inspiration you took from the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, truthfully, I thought he did a really good job. I didn't love the movie, but I thought that... that <laughs> I thought that Ben Affleck's Daredevil was really cool, you know, and I, and it felt very appropriate. So, yeah, I, I, used, I, I used some of his stuff. <laughs> and I would recommend people watching the, the director's cut. It's really good. All right, thank yes. you. Thank you. Hi. Hey, one of my favorite fantasy movies is Stardust. Could you tell us something about that? Sorry, well, <laughs> well, because they were okay. Could you tell us something about that? About the, uh, the, the experience? Yes. Yeah. Um, oh God, it was so long ago. Um, um, someone today was asking me to sign a Stardust thing, and they said, uh, can you write Tristan? And I was like, who's Tristan? <laughs> and I was like, oh, right, that's my character. <laughs> um, uh, it was a, it was a long time ago. Um, I, I, one thought that comes to mind, I'm sure he won't mind me sharing this, but that, that it got down to two actors to play that role, and the other one was Tom Sturridge, and Tom then years later did the Sandman with Neil Gaiman, which is really cool. It's a nice full circle, so there was a little something there. Thank you. Thank you so much.
So I know some people still have questions and some are too shy to come up to the microphone, but you'll be at your signing table. So if you get your signatures, make sure you ask your questions there. And then if you have a photo shoot, make sure you're in time. I want to thank you both so much thank for being so here. Thank, yes, thank you so much. Thank you.